emergency press conference bonus podcast episode. Anyone who's extremely anxious or nervous going into races that don't feel like you're alone, like every, or a lot of people feel that way. I know I do. The thing that really differentiates, and I think you can see this across the board with the best in the world, is they simply don't quit when adversity hits. When something gets really hard, they don't know how to give up. I had to like break down for a moment, get myself together, and then figure out, okay, what am I going to do? So I think that like kind of letting myself just be upset and convince myself it's okay, come up with a plan. Mont Tremblant 70.3, the race that never was. So you just came back from Canada, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that was just yesterday, but I think I've just blocked it out of my mind. But yes, just came back yesterday. <laughs> what a trip. And I know that it was absolutely a roller coaster for you. I know there was over 2,000 people signed up to race Montremblant, and zero of them got the chance to race the 70.3 distance because of the thick smog and the wildfires that are happening in Canada. I thought that this would be a really great, quick bonus touch base just to hear from you some of your ups and downs that you went through on race week from a performance mindset perspective, because I'm sure a lot of people are experiencing those same emotions, the highs, the lows, the takeaways, and just to hear your perspective on it, what it's like to prepare for the race only to not have the chance to. I mean, how are you feeling today? First of all, do you feel Still pretty disappointed about it. Today's actually a really weird day because I had a really great workout and do not feel absolutely smashed. And I just would have never imagined feeling this way two days after what was supposed to be the race. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was as much of an emotional roller coaster of a weekend that I think ultimately I have a lot of great takeaways from that I think was a good it, it was overall good for me I think for like my mental like mindset of where I am right now so yeah I don't know it's a lot of emotions a lot one of my favorite ways of thinking about what separates the absolute best versus the people who give up along the way is there's just something broken mentally with the people who are the best. And it's not because they have more talent than anyone else. It's not because they have this natural gift or ability. We know Trevor Foley's catchphrase, if you will, is that hashtag no talent. So, and I, I think the guy's talented, but the thing that really differentiates, and I think you can see this across the board with the best in the world, is they simply don't quit when adversity hits. When something gets really hard, they don't know how to give up. They will work through whatever sort of challenge that occurs. And I think, you know, this was a little bit of a roadblock for you because you were going to get on the board with PTO points. You are in great form, great shape, ready to race. There's a little less competition there than normal. The field wasn't as deep. So, you know, I think you set up mentally and you didn't get the chance to see it through. So do you mind first sharing a little bit about how you were feeling going into the race, because I don't think mentally, even though physically your numbers were great, mentally you weren't so hot. Yeah, I think that was actually where I, I learned the most with this trip was going in. I have no real reason to have felt this way, but I was kind of in a lull or a rut with training, but it was just from like how I was feeling mentally and not physically. Cause like you're saying before leading up, I was, I've had great training blocks. I've hit a lot of my numbers. Um, I failed a couple of runs, but my, my bike workouts have been amazing. Like, I mean, a lot of improvements there. And even in the swim, I've started to feel more comfortable and confident in the water. I think that I was really looking forward to to getting to see the the progress in those two, but I mean, as you know, the day before I woke up like crying, uh, not because of the race, but I had a little bit of a mishap with my pedals and 
could not get them on. Like it was supposed to be the easiest bike bag transition that you can fly with possible. Like all I had to do was take off my pedals and, and my wheels. And I convinced myself like, that'll be easy. Nothing can go wrong with that. Well, apparently my, my pedals had been stripped. I do not know how that happened because they've come off and on so easily every time I've ever put them on or off. Not the bike bag's fault, obviously. Yeah, no, it's not the 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 bag. I, I really don't know what happened. Um, and I, I just could not get them on and just started getting more and more frustrated with it to the point where I was just like in tears and didn't know what to do. And I ended up just like needing to cool off a little bit. So I was like, I don't about a, less than a mile from a lake. And I was like, I'm going to go open water swim this morning and just take a little bit. So I went down, swam, felt amazing in the water, had a lot, like it built my confidence, honestly, going into the race that swim. And as I was coming back, I stopped to get a coffee and lo and behold, it was a bike shop in the coffee shop. So I talked with the people there and asked if I could bring the bike in and they were very welcoming and um, said, yeah, of course, we'll, we'll definitely look at it. And so went back, got my bike, brought it back. And I mean, it took them 15 minutes, I think, to fix it. And they, that they told me it was stripped. They re redid it and got them on for me. So, I mean, and then, but yeah, I mean, I got that. They were helpful, got it back. But then when I went to go do a ride on it, the power wasn't working and it wasn't because of batteries because it was connecting and even the cadence was working. It was just the power that wasn't showing up. And so I went through the, the mindset of shift of, okay, I'm going to be racing without power tomorrow, which I actually felt pretty good about. I think a lot of my nerves went away from it after, I don't know, just like the thought of being able to do the race at just like your pure effort and not just about hitting a number was kind of uh, a nice thought to me. And so yeah, I just had a lot going wrong the day before, and this was my first trip going alone. Brian wasn't there with me, so it was just me to myself and my thoughts and all the logistics and everything, which, I mean, they all started working out, but... I think in the moment they started to get to you, though, and that's what I'm looking to highlight on because other people probably experienced this, too. Yeah. And, you know, I would say there were moments where you wanted to quit or maybe felt like, Hey, this whole sport isn't for you because of these issues. Yeah. It was, it was that feeling like you're saying that people stick in it because when they're met with adversities, they, they find their way through or they, they always just find, they make it through it. And I guess I never, I thought like that moment would look like, okay, you know, this is what we're going to do. And I would just like have the answer to everything. Whereas it was more of like, I had to like break down for a moment, get myself together and then figure out, okay, what am I going to do? So I think that like kind of letting myself just be upset and convince myself it's okay, come up with a plan. And I think that that was, that's like what it is that people, they, they can get through is it's not, it doesn't have to be pretty doesn't have to be smooth. It doesn't have to like be this, like, I don't know. It, it was just. Yeah. I think micro people quit all the time. People quit triathlon. People quit the sport. People quit on themselves. People quit on their goals. And then macro, you reattach yourself to the bigger picture and the bigger goal. So it's okay to quit. Just keep going when you do eventually. Yeah. And that's exactly how it felt. Like I had such a low, then had an amazing swim and then came around to the idea of not having power. And, um, yeah, it was, I eventually got my mindset back ready and was looking forward to the race and, uh, was pretty relaxed the rest of the evening. Um, so yeah, it was. So race day came, was there really ash on the bikes from leaving them overnight? So I actually didn't notice on my bike. I, but I also didn't, Hey, I wasn't like looking for it. Was there a moth invasion? Yes, there was an absurd amount of moths. Like whenever I got up that morning and went outside, it looked 
like a very foggy day. And that's what I assumed it was. And then it just smelt like a campfire. Like it, it was like if you're sitting by a fire and the wind changes direction and the smoke gets to where it's like blowing right on you, like that's how it felt walking outside. And so I've never experienced that before. I've never been anywhere with wildfires. So I, I didn't really know how bad that, how bad it was. Um, but then I was walking up there and a lot of people were complaining and um, like, it, it was very smoky. You couldn't see much of anything. And I guess I'm, I'm assuming that with the wildfires and the smoke, that's what brought the moths in. And the lights that were shining on the bikes overnight just attracted them. So there was the giant generators with the lights. And I don't know, it was probably like three to five inches thick of moths under and around it. And I actually saw a girl, she was on her phone and was kind of like she was looking up at the moths and was talking to someone like, wow, there's so many moths here. And she stepped in the giant like puddle of them and slipped and like almost went down into them. Like she caught herself. And I was just like, that would have probably been an absolute nightmare. That's disgusting. It was it was crazy. I mean, I've never seen so many moths, but I honestly wasn't even that wasn't what bothered me. It was more of the smoke in the air. And you said, I mean, you spoke to Lionel Sanders and Trevor when you were there. And you said on his warm up, Lionel was struggling to run like an eight minute mile. Well, yeah, they it was uh, Trevor said that they were on their like two mile warm up and they were st- like they couldn't breathe very well. And even for me, it was over a half mile walk to get from transition to the start of the race. And a- another thing, I did not receive a a timing chip in my bag. So I had to get one race morning once I realized it. And so I walked over early to make sure I had time to get that. And there was like a pretty big steep hill walking up and over to get down to the, the start of the swim. And people on that hill were just coughing. And even myself, I kind of felt a little bit out of breath like this. I, it, you could, you could just feel that it wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, so I walked down, got my timing chip and was just kind of sitting along the bank, like looking at the water, trying to stay calm and decided to open my goo to have the the Martin 30 minutes before the race start. And about that time, they called everyone back up. So, I mean, you had something that you weren't looking forward to. I think the nerves got the best of you. You've been really struggling before races to get in the right mindset. You've been really nervous beforehand. And then this race, you had it taken away from you. So you didn't even get the chance to do it. Do you feel like you had any shift in mindset from that experience? Yeah, I I definitely think that that was the thing I'm going to take the most from this race was you know, the day before that morning before I was sitting there almost wishing I didn't have to race. I was thinking to myself, like, I just want to go home. Like, I don't want to do this. And I, I guess now looking back, I would have never have asked for that having now not actually not racing. And so I think for my next races, I'm definitely have more, I'm more eager to do it. I, I don't think I can not be nervous. I I don't know if that's something that's just going to go away, but I definitely will not have that thought of, I wish I didn't have to race tomorrow because I'm really excited to race and do not want to have to go through all of those nerves just to not have it because it's definitely much more worth. It's worth it. The, the nerves, the anticipation, the anxiety, is worth being able to get out there and, you know, see where you are, push yourself and have that, that feeling that you get after the race. Yeah. And just approaching it from the gratitude of having the chance to race in the first place is a big shift, I think. Yeah. Moving forward. Yeah. And I think besides like the mind shift or (laughs) the mind shift, um, takeaway, I think that I also, got to catch up with a lot of athletes that have really 
made me feel at home um, at these races. So like Danny Treese, um, Ella are some people who I met at my very first race and have gotten to see and catch up with them actually at Chattanooga and again here. And so it was really nice being able to catch up and see them again, as well as meeting new people. Um, after the race was canceled, I went to go run on a treadmill at a gym and it was locked, but there were two other professional women there running on the treadmill and let me in. So I uh, got to get my long run in with some people. And then when I went to go swim that day, I also got to swim in. I met somebody else um, there. So it was like really nice just getting to know people more because a lot of these people are also going to be at Oregon, which is going to be my next race. And, you know, I'm learning names and be going to be able to like know these people more and more as I, I see them at races. And it's just like really, really fun to I, it's almost like a new thing that makes me excited to go to the races is getting to see see friends. So. Yeah, the triathlon community is really tight and it's the same exact thing for me in the age group scene. So what you put out there is what you get back. And I've made dozens of friends just and you see them at similar events because there's not that many events out there. So, yeah, I think that's a, a good takeaway as well, even though you didn't get the chance to race. We just wanted to put this out there quickly you know right we got our our bike run in today we wanted to film this before our swim just because we are confident that there's a lot of people going through some sort of bumps in the road from Tremblant and beyond and we'll have other performance mindset run-ins along the way so while it was fresh and while it was raw I wanted to hear from Kaylee her experience from going through it because I I'm sure that she's not the only one who had those ups and downs of the roller coaster along the way. Any final thoughts you want to leave with everybody? No, I, I think we were we were able to pretty much touch on all the the high points. And I think that, you know, anyone who's extremely anxious or nervous going into races that don't feel like you're alone, like every or a lot of people feel that way. I know I do. And at the end of the day, not getting to race is so much worse. So I think um, next time, just remember, like it actually could get canceled. <laughs> so yeah, at least at least it's not canceled. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so emergency press conference, bonus podcast episode. We hope you liked it. Just a little quick release from us. So we'll catch you soon. Follow, subscribe. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, we'll be back on Friday. Yep, catch you then. Can we get the shit part out? <laughs>